tends to be the hardest for people, but it's, once again, you're not starting in the right spot. So everybody, this, we would first just say, okay, instead of looking at this in sh um, entire shift in log, let's just talk about what log to the base three of X looks like with no shifts. So if you think about it, let's pretend I said, because I am just asking you the vertical asymptote of X intercept and domain. So I don't even need a perfect graph. I need a rough sketch. But let's pretend you were going to graph it for reals. This is how you should be doing it. You should be starting here with the parent function. And then you should be saying to yourself, well, instead of looking at the log, let's look at base 3 to the x. Because those x, y points are easier to get. So then I plug in negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, for example. And when I get 1 third, 1, 3, and 9. And then you would switch them. You would switch them to get your logarithmic parent function points. 1 third, negative 1. Um, one, zero, three, one, nine, two. So think about it. Isn't there just going to be a vertical asymptote at zero for all logarithmic functions that have no shift? So, right, why do I have two graphs drawn? Because I like to have a parent function graph drawn, just a rough sketch, and then I'll draw what the shifts happen, you know? Because I'm not saying actually graph it. This is just helping you if you wanted to. Okay, so then this would look like this, something like this. I'm just drawing a rough sketch for this. Does everybody see? Okay, so then from there, I'm going to now just think about, because I'm just trying to find out these three things, I'm going to figure out what the shifts are. So everybody, what's throwing people off is like, for example, this has a negative 2 in front. To determine shift left and right, you can only have a 1 in front of x. So the first thing we would do is factor out a negative 2. Not pull it out, but factor it out of the terms. So we would rewrite this as log of the base 3 of negative 2, and then divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and then left would be x minus 2. So now you would say, let's go over here and describe the shifts. Right there you would say, right, 2. So think about it. If we were actually graphing this, wouldn't that be adding 2 to your x values? Okay? And then after that, this is still, even though it's not out in front, it works the same way. It's a vertical stretch. So you'd still say stretch of 2. Yeah, but that negative good point, so Joseph makes a good point, that's a reflection over the y-axis. So yes, if you were graphing these exact points, which I'm not going to, I'm going to draw a rough sketch, but we would times our y values by 2, and then we would also reflection over the y wouldn't that change your x's? So then you would times your x's by, well, first you should have times them by negative 1 and then add 2 because multiplication comes first. Okay, but I don't need these exact points. I'm just going to draw a rough sketch. So now we just said it was right 2 units. So this asymptote is now over here at right 2. Everybody with me? Now it used to be like this. Now it's more stretched out, but that's not going to affect anything with my domain range and stuff, you know? So then from there, wasn't it reflected over the y-axis? So that's going to come over here, isn't it? So then I'm going to go like, it's going to look something like this. Yeah, but I, don't, I just need a rough sketch because that's not going to affect my these things, right? So we'll do that by hand. So our vertical asymptote is that x equals 2. Our x-intercept, we'll come back to that. What's our, my domain? Domain is left and right. Negative infinity up to 2, not including 2. So just this rough sketch helps me do all these things. Now, I know that this, uh, we didn't really go over x-intercept. Um, so this is what I would do. So we know for all functions, the x-intercept is when y equals 0. So look, I can literally just do some algebra. So I'm going to erase this and give myself some room. So I'm going to just do some algebra. So I'm going to set up a true statement. It's when y equals 0. So then we would have this. We would have 0 is equal to log to the base 3 of negative 2x plus 4. So now we need to solve for x. So what if we undo log base 3? Base 3 both sides. 3 to the 0 power is? So 1 is equal to negative 2x plus 4. And now all we have to do is solve for x. So we subtract 4 from both sides giving me negative 3 equals negative 2x, therefore, good, x equals 3 halves. So our x-intercept we would write as an xy point, 3 halves, comma, 0. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Okay, let's begin um, today's lesson, but first, let's make sure we're done with last time. So, I want you to remember, in calculus, you'll have to be able to simplify both of these within two seconds. So, just tell me, what do each of those simplify to be? What does the first one simplify to be? Ten, because three raised to the log base three are inverses. They undo each other, we get a ten. Okay, ln of e squared. Yeah, two. ln and e cancel out, so we get two, right? Super easy stuff. Okay, now what I want you to do is on your notebook or on a whiteboard, I want you to write these four things <coughs> as either a logarithm or an exponential. So we're not solving anything, it's already solved. Like we know that's a true statement. It says rewrite an exponential as a log and a log as an exponential. So rewrite this in logarithmic form, exponential form, logarithmic form, exponential form, ready, set, go. Let's make sure you're good with this before we move on. You should have this. This to, in its logarithmic form will be log to the base 5. I would get in the habit of using parentheses just from here on out because that really helps people not make errors. So log to the base 5 of 125 equals 3. Did you get it right? Cool. Rewriting this in exponential form, you should have 16 raised to the 3 fourths equals 8, which is a true statement. So you could check to make sure you did it right. Then right here, you would rewrite this in exponential form. So you should have... E raised to the 1.386 equals 4. And you could type that into your calculator and it will work. You could know you did it right. Then right here, this in logarithmic form would be ln of 7.3. Once again, just use parentheses, even though your book doesn't sometimes, just to get in the habit. Does anybody want me to go through any of them? You're all good. What's, what are you feeling? Yeah. Sweet, moving on. Hey, so recall, starting, this is the start of the new lesson. Recall that log of the base 10 will have this format. Y is equal to log of X with nothing there. Just log of X we know actually secretly means base 10 to the X, right? Okay, so now we're going to learn about something called the change of base formula. So due to our calculators um, not being really capable of doing bases that are not 10, we can learn how to rewrite log of any base of x as base 10 so that our calculator can calculate it for us. Now, some of you are thinking, well, my calculator can do it because there are some calculators that can. So I don't need to learn this. You're wrong because a lot of times, 99% of the time on the ACT, they will leave it in the change of base answer to make sure you don't use your calculator because they know you can do that. Does that make sense? So they check to see if you know the rule. Okay, so you have to learn it. So everybody, we can literally take log to the base A of X, technically, and we can rewrite it as base 10. So this is equivalent mathematically to changing this and writing it as log of X divided by log of A. So notice that would be log to the base 10 of X divided by log to the base 10 of A. They are literally equal mathematically. <coughs> No, because you have to remember, like, this isn't like a division. You know, this is log of x. You know, you can't divide out, like, it's not just log by itself. You know what I mean? So the log can't disappear. So that's a valid question. Now, I'll explain in a minute why this works, okay? So just stay with, just kind of write that down for right now. Now, also, it's true that you could literally rewrite log of the base a of x, and instead of using log of the base 10, you could use ln. So you could literally rewrite this as ln of x divided by ln of a. Now, here's a stupid little trick to help me remember which one goes on top. Because a lot of people will get here, and then they'll forget. Does A go on top or does X? So let me just give you, like, a little trick I use. If I have log to the base um, 2 of, I don't know, 7, sure. Do you see how I write 2 small? Like, that's just how we write logs, right? Like, we write it mini. So this is a stupid little trick I use. You always do log of the big thing divided by log of the small thing. Now, I mean big in size, not number. Does that make sense, everybody? Log of the big divided by log of the small, because big people, like big gets to go first. Like, if you're older, you get to go first. Does that make sense? So that goes on top. Okay, yeah. So, we will show you how why this works in just a minute. So everybody look, last time we learned this. We learned, if I said to you, what is log of the base 425? You could see, well, we don't know. Let's set it equal to x. Let's rewrite this. This is how we solved it last time. Let's rewrite this as an exponential. 
so that we can evaluate this. So if we base for both sides, we would then have 4 to the x equals 25. Remember doing that last time. But yeah, then we get here, and do you see how base, this cannot be written as base 4? So it's going to be like you're not going to be able to solve this by this method. So what you would do instead is use the change of base and or the change of base formula, because this is not a pretty answer like we've seen in the past. So let's rewrite this using the change of base formula. So you would do, this is equal to log of 25 divided by log of 4. And now you can literally type it in your calculator. Ready, set, go. Type it in. Now I need the full decimal. So when you've got it, let me know. Sweet, did we all get that? Now look, you can check your answer. So everybody keep that decimal and hit do four, raise to the, and then hit second answer, the second minus sign. So it'll type the decimal in for you and you don't have to retype it by hand. So do four raised to that, and do you get 25? Yep. So that's how we can know we've done it right. We would have never guessed that, though. That would have taken forever. One, this is actually an interesting thought I thought of last hour. One alternate way to solving this would be if we get here, couldn't we go to our y equals, and then y1 type in this, and y2 type in this, and then see where they intersect? That would be another way to do it. But will you change your base formula since we're dealing with logs? Now look, it is true that you can literally instead use ln. So type in ln of 25 divided by ln of 4 and make sure I'm not nuts. Do you get the same decimal? Sweet. Hey, do this one. Ready, go. Give me the decimal. Yeah, you do. Yeah, because otherwise when you go to check it, you will not be exactly right. So everybody look, I'm just showing you again. If I tried to solve this using exponentials, we now are at a problem because we can't write this as base 2. So instead we would use change of base formula, which you guys did, log of 12 divided by log of 2, and you got that, and then you can check it by typing it in, and it really works. We could have used ln of 12 divided by ln of 2 and been good to go. Okay, sweet. Now we're going to come back to this. You have to remind me to come back to it because it is cool to see. So why does the change of base formula work? We're going to come back to that once we've learned properties of logs so it makes more sense. Okay. So everybody, I'm going to remind you of something. Do not write this down. Just look up here because you have already learned this clear back in secondary math like 1 slash 2. So we know properties of exponents. So this is like how I teach it in secondary 3, like regular and if I teach secondary 2. So let's just, I'm going to remind you of the rules. Some basic rules, I guess. Okay, so this is how the song goes. When you multiply, you add. When you divide, then you subtract. Raise a power to a power and you multiply. Okay, so watch. When you multiply, you can combine this using addition. When you multiply, you add. When you divide, then you subtract. Now you always subtract the top from the bottom. So this would be two minus three, which would be negative one. Is everybody good? Raise a power to a power and you multiply, so this would be x to the 6. Now we know that exponentials and logarithms are inverses of each other, correct? So properties of, so we did learn last time some basic properties of logarithms, but now we're going to get into the nitty gritty all of the properties of logarithms. So because logs and exponentials are inverses of each other, they go hand in hand. And you'll see what I mean. So everybody start writing down. Here's the product property. So everybody look, if we have log the base a of u times v, do you see how we can then split it up and write it as log the base a of u plus log the base a of v? When you multiply, you add. You see how they go hand in hand? When you multiply, you add. Same with ln's. Properties of ln's is the same as properties of logs, since that is a log. When you multiply, you add. So we're going to be actually switching back and forth. So we can take something that's multiplied and rewrite it as two separate logarithms with addition, and then that's vice versa too. So if we have two logarithms of the same base that are added, we can then go backwards and put it as one logarithm using multiplication. Now to be honest, going this way is going to be more like mathematically more significant to us. Like that's really more important to be able to do. 
to do math things that we're going to do in the future, but switching back and forth helps you be better at going backwards. Okay, so then when you divide, so log the base A of U divided by V. When you divide, then you subtract. So we could do log of the base A of U minus, because of the divide sign, so this has got to come last, because it's minus log of the base A of V. And once again, then this is really what's more important. If we have two logarithms of the same base and there's a subtraction sign, you can put it into one logarithm with a division sign. Same with LNs. And then if we have, this is the raise of power to a power and you multiply, you kind of have to kind of use your imagination a little bit. So this is a base raised to a base raised to a power. So then what we're doing is we're taking this N and we're multiplying. You see how N is just multiplied in front? So if you have, let's say you're going backwards, if we had N times log the base A of U, you would say, oh, that's really just an exponent on my base. So we're going to be able to switch back and forth. This is now testing your ability to use properties of logarithms. So let's read the instructions, okay? Because this is testing. Do you know how to use properties of logarithms? It says, write each logarithm in terms of ln of 2 or ln of 3. So we have to be able to take and rewrite this with 2s and 3s instead. So let's think about this. This is really like ln of 6, isn't it? So if we need it to be in terms of 2 and 3, what is that equal to technically? ln of 2 times 3, isn't that the same thing? And now we, would, we could, if we wanted, based on the kind of instructions, can we now split that up? When you multiply, you add. So this is equivalent to ln of 2 plus ln of 3. Now, guys, take your calculator and type in ln of 6 and compare that decimal to ln of 2 plus ln of 3. If, that, if we've done it right, they should be the same decimal because it's just they're equal. There's different ways of writing it. Yes, they were. So people might be asking right now, well, why is this better than this? There is not one. Not one is better than the other. They are both great. It's just testing do you know how to use properties of logarithms. Okay, because obviously this was easier to just calculate. Okay, let's follow these instructions. It says rewrite this as ln of 2 or ln of 3. So we have to have 2s and 3s. So couldn't we rewrite this as ln of 2 is good on top, but 27, how can we rewrite that, we re -write that as 2 and 3? 3 to the third. Does everyone agree with Tanner? Was that not Tanner? Okay, well, just because remember, I usually give you the credit for Eric's work. Because we have, that we have oh, to have it equal. Oh, Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Sorry. Yes. No, that's a valid question. Yeah, so we got we to gotta keep, yeah, so we got to keep going, though, because then we would have to keep going with this. Does that make sense? Because it has to be final answer threes and twos. So now, yeah, let's split this up, everybody. So we would say this is ln of 2, divide you, subtract, minus ln, oops, minus ln of 3 to the third. So Joseph makes a great point. We need to take this exponent and put it in front here. So we really have ln of 2 minus 3 ln of 3. And now we've rewritten it in terms of ln of 3s and 2s. Yes. That's just a property of exponents. So that would be expanding it down like, completely. Okay, any questions on that? You could check to make sure that that decimal and that decimal are equal, and they are. Okay, cool. So now let's look at these two. This is where it gets these properties of logarithms really come into use. So it says find the exact, well, these are ones we already knew, actually. These are ones from last time. So it says find the exact value without using a calculator. So let's think of this. This is log to the base 5. 
of base 5 raised to the what power? One third. So what happens? Yep, base 5 and log of the base 5 cancel out, don't they? So that's simplified to be one third. All right, let's look at this one. How are you guys getting four? Oh, L and E cancel out, so six. L and E cancel out. Four. Watch how else we could have done this a little bit longer way, but stall just showing you how properties of exponents work. Look back here. When you subtract, can't you divide? Because they're both ln's, let's put this as one ln. So this is ln of e to the six. Divide, because of the subtraction sign, e to the second, which is equal to ln of e to the fourth, which is four, because ln and e undo each other. Two different ways of getting there. Cool. All right, here we go. This is where it starts to get good. I'm going to have you guys practice this in just a second. So it says, expand the logarithm. Now, technically, this is in parentheses. I hate how our book doesn't use very good parentheses. So log the base 4 of 5x cubed y. Now here's where people usually mess up. People will say 5 and x cubed are connected. No, that's 5 times x cubed times y. So we're expanding this. We're taking one logarithm and pulling it out to multiple logarithms. So because they're base 4, we can, so this is log the base 4, we can split this up. So don't we have log the base 4 of 5? When you multiply, you add plus log to the base 4 of x cubed. Yep, and we will do that. And then we have plus, because when you multiply, you add log to the base 4 of y. And then Joseph's remembering, if we're expanding this, we need to fix our exponent, so that should come in front. So I'm just going to go like this, because I don't want to have to rewrite it. Expand it completely. Pretty dang easy, right? Yeah, we've rewritten it as multiple logarithms. Now, here's the thing, okay? Like, a lot of people are like, well, why did we do that? Because honestly, guys, this is better than this. It should, to be able to go this way helps you go the other way. Does that make sense? Which is the more important way? So everybody, let's expand this logarithm. Now careful, everybody listen, because this is where a lot of people mess up. The rule is, if you're trying to rewrite this as separate logarithms, you can only split apart multiplication, division, and exponents. You cannot split up a subtraction sign. You can only expand if you're multiplying, dividing, or exponents. So everybody, let's rewrite this with, this top part is actually an exponent. So let's rewrite this. This is equivalent to ln of, on top, 3x minus 5 to the 1 half divided by 7. So do you get what I'm saying? You won't be able to split apart the subtraction sign. The only thing you can split up is multiplication, because then you can add, division, because then you can subtract, and then your powers you can pull in front. So let's look here. Well, then there's only two split ups here. We have ln of 3x minus 5 to the 1 half when you divide, you subtract, so minus ln of 7. And then our last step would be to take that 1 half and pull it in front. 1 half ln of 3x minus 5, which cannot be split up, minus ln of 7. Because the, the rule is when you multiply, you add. When you divide, then you subtract. Raise the power to a power and you multiply. There was no rule about when you subtract, you can then, you know what I yeah. mean? But this is connected, isn't it, in parentheses? We can't, like, break the forbidden rule in one half that and one half that. Yeah, not all the questions. Okay, sweet. Okay, do you guys think you could do this one by yourself? Try it. Because of the two bottoms. Okay, so we could now expand the logarithm. So when you multiply, you add. When you divide, then you subtract, right? So this one really gets to people because of these two things on bottom. So everybody watch. You would do, I do it in steps, so I'm going to go like this. Log the base 3 of x 
squared, like this, x squared, right? Plus, because the multiplication, log to the base 3 of y cubed. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Now, there's a division sign, so I've got to subtract log to the base 3 of z to the what power? One half. Now, a lot of people from here want to do an addition sign because it's multiplied. But if you do an addition sign, then think about it. We can reorder addition in any order. So why not put it over here, like log to the base 3 of p plus, and then wouldn't that be on top? Yes. So don't we need another subtraction sign to put it on bottom? So minus, right, minus log to the base 3 of now, here's, what, here's what's going to help make sense for some of you why we have two minus signs. Technically, can't we go like this? If there's two negatives, can't I go factor out a negative 1? Then left would be log to the base 3 of z to the 1 half plus log to the base 3 of p. Do you see why they're multiplied? But then they put this negative puts them both on bottom. Multiplied. On bottom. Okay, yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Okay, great. But now my final answer would be taking the exponent down. So you'd go boom, boom, put a two there, scribble that out, pull out a three down here, scribble that out. So, no, because this isn't log to the base three of base three. That's when it works. Valid question, in fact. Then I'm going to scribble that out because I'm too lazy to rewrite it. Okay, so that would be your final answer. 2 log to the base 3 of x plus 3 log to the base 3 of y minus 1 half log to the base 3 of z minus log to the base 3 of p. Okay, you guys try another one by yourself. Go for it. Let's see who can do this bad boy. So this is how I would have done it, um, which there, you all, a lot of you wrote it differently than me, but your answer was equally correct. So we have technically this, log of x cubed y raised to the one half and because it's multiplication it's not breaking the forbidden rule to do that and that right all over z squared p cubed q so then we really have this log of x to the three halves y to the one half divided by z squared p cubed q so then from there i just said okay so then i have three halves log of x Plus, because of the multiplication sign, one half log of y minus, because of the divide, minus, some people put parentheses and did all this, but I'm just going to put the minus root. Yours was equally correct if you had parentheses. Two log of z minus three log of p minus log of q. Sweet. Good job, everybody. Yeah. Back to the no. Okay, let's go the other way. Let's go the other way. So now we're taking, this is really what's more important to us. We're taking two separated logarithms, and because they both have base 10, we can put it as one logarithm, which is way better than having it spread apart in, in the usefulness for us in the future. So I would, the first thing I would notice, this is how you, what you should do, is fix your exponents. So we're really dealing with this, log of x to the 1 half plus log of x plus 1 to the third. Yeah, but we're just putting it in one logarithm. When you multiply, you add. So when you add, you multiply. So this is log as one logarithm, log of x to the 1 half times, because of the addition sign, x plus 1 to the third. Now, here is one thing to note. If you have a fractional exponent, you would want to rewrite it as a radical if they're telling you to condense it. So our final answer would be log of the square root of x times x plus 1 to the third. And we know we would not break forbidden rules and do that, do that. Questions? Go for it. Try it by yourself. 2ln of x plus 2 minus ln of x. Rewrite it as 1ln. 
This is a two-step problem, really. So you guys should be there. So you should be taking this up. Check your answer. So you have ln of x plus 2 squared minus ln of x. So then this is ln of x plus 2 squared divided by x. Who got it right? Woohoo! Because when you subtract, you divide. It really is just a two-step problem. Hey, try another one by yourself. All right, so some of you probably said, let's distribute the one-third, and that is a great idea. So we have one-third log the base 2 of x plus one-third log the base 2 of x plus 1. Is everybody with me in this step? Then you could take one-third up, take one-third up. So then we have log the base 2 of x to the one-third plus log to the base 2 of x plus 1 to the one-third. When you add, you multiply, so this would be log of the base 2 of x to the 1 third times x plus 1 to the 1 third. Now, we would rewrite that as a radical, so because fractional exponents are radicals, so we have the cube root of x times the cube root of x plus 1. So now, since they're both cube roots, couldn't I just go log of the base 2 of x? Oh, yeah, let's write the cube root in there. Log the base 2 of the cube root of that times that. So x times x plus 1. You could, but once again, what is it more simplified to have it in standard or factor form? Not one is better than the other. So yes, you could. Okay, watch. There is another way to do this, which is like kind of quicker. But either one's good. So everybody, you would say, oh, this is multiplied in front of log. So that's an exponent. So what we have is log the base 2 of x. This is going to help you for future if you want to do it maybe a little faster. And then we have plus log to the base 2 of x plus 1. And that's raised to the 1 third. Is everybody good? So now you say when you add you. So this is in parentheses log to the base 2 of x times x plus 1. And that's raised to the 1 third. Oh, like this. Well, actually, kind of more like out here, right? Yeah, one of the two. And then you'd say, okay, well, instead of writing it as a fractional exponent, I'll write it as a root. So that's log the base 2 of the cube root of all that stuff of x times x plus 1. And we got there the same answer. Just how do you want to think through it? But honestly, like, Sometimes people think they're like that, and it's fine. We arrived there. Cool. Hey, ready? Try this one. So we have log the base 2 of x. Isn't that positive? Yeah. That's got to be on top then. Log the base 2 of x is on top. Subtract means divide, doesn't it? Yeah. So then we have a y, and then a subtract means it goes on bottom, doesn't it? Yeah. So then to z, z to the, yep, fit. That easy, guys. Okay, try another one by yourself. We're getting more advanced and more advanced. Good point. I'm glad Joseph pointed that out. They are all the same base because I'm trying to get a Okay, so check your answers, guys. If you think about this, uh, can't addition and subtraction be reordered in any order? Yeah. Is 5 minus 3 any different than negative 3 plus 5? No, right? Same thing. So we can reorder addition and subtraction in any order. So think about it. We can literally just say, okay, let's reorder this as log of base 3 of y, because that's positive, and then plus 1 half log of the base 3 of p, because that was positive, and now we have minus 3 log of the base 3 of x, minus log of the base 3 of z. And it's we've written the exact same thing in a different order. So we really now put this together, log of the base 3, what goes on top? Your positives. So we'll have a y and a square root of p. I jumped. Does everybody see where I jumped to? And then on bottom, because there's a subtraction here, we would have x cubed. Once again, I pulled that up. And then we'll have a z, since it's two subtraction signs. 
Awesome, you're right. Awesome. Hey, do you want more examples of that? Do you want to see if this one tricks you? Or you guys like, nah, we're sick of this. That's it. That table is the hated table. You at least lie and say, it's the funnest thing I've ever done. Say it. Say it. Yeah, say it's the funnest thing it's ever you've ever done. See, they think it's fun, you jerks back there in group six. Okay, cool. Then I'm good. You're sure. Okay, group six, leave while everybody else does the problem. Okay, so I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that we could write it as log the base two. And then on top, we would have our x and our fifth root of p. And then on bottom, we would have the square root of y times z. So wait, that's a hard one, you guys. Good job. That really is way hard for people. I mean, they can't really get much harder because there's just those three rules. You know what I mean? So cool. Okay. So everybody, this says simplify. This is on the homework. So I just want to let's just start doing some of these. So go to where you do you're gonna do your homework. So it says simplify using properties of logs. Because of the instructions, we absolutely have to use the properties of logs. So that must mean we need to split this up. So you would say, well, this is log the base two of four to the second power plus log the base two of three to the fourth power. It is. Yeah, we need to move the exponents down. So then we have two log to the base two of four plus four log to the base two of three. Good point. Eric is making a fabulous point. Can we even calculate these in our calculator? No. No. We need change of base formula, don't we? So this is equivalent to 2 log of 4 divided by log of 2. Because we do log of the big thing divided by log of the small thing. That's the change of base formula we learned at the beginning. So then we have plus 4 log of the big thing, log of three, divided by log of two. two. And now you could type it into your calculator, but on an ECT, a lot of times they will literally leave the answer in this format to make sure you know the change of base formula. Because wouldn't it have been easier to just calculate that and then done the change of base formula up there? You get what I'm saying? So you could now type it into your calculator depending if it wants decimals or not. It does say, if it just says simplify, it could be go. Right, I'm trying to think of that. Means. Well, simplify could be clear down to the simplify, like clear down to the decimal. So I'm thinking they're going to go clear to the decimal. So now you would just type it into your calculator and what whatever decimal you get. Okay, cool. Let's do another one. No, your calculator cannot do base two, remember? So we have to do base, the change of base formula. Okay, let's do number 20. So we would say, okay, this is the same thing as log of nine. If you don't need to write this down, you could just watch if you're like, I get it by now. So log of nine minus log of 300. And then from there, because it's base 10, you're good to go in your calculator, aren't you? If it wants the decimal, depending. Okay, let's look at this one. So this would be ln of 6. So watch, because this one does have some simplification you could do. Minus ln of e to the second. So even, even if it did not want the calculator version, I could pull this 2, couldn't I, down in front? So ln of 6, and then minus 2 ln of e. And then what cancels out, Adam? ln and e. So our final answer, if it didn't want the decimal, would be ln of 6 minus 2. 
once again, if it doesn't want the decimal, you could just type it in then. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We need to see why the change of base formula works. So you should never just be content with, okay, yeah, I'll just go with it. It's quick. It's interesting, okay? A lot of you advanced thinkers should find interest in why things work, and you're the honors people. If you don't find interest, we're not going to have engineers in the world, and we're in huge trouble. Okay, scientists, mathematicians. So everybody, you should be saying, why can we rewrite this? Everybody look. Why can we write this as log of 25 divided by log of 4? So I'm going to explain why, and it's going to be quick, so everybody just, you should watch. Okay, so let's look at this. If we have this, y is equal to log to the base 4 of 25, we know if we really wanted, we could rewrite it as an exponential, couldn't we? So we would need to undo base, log base 4, so what do we base 4 both sides? Yeah? So we would have 4 to the y power equals 25. Now if I choose, and I'm trying to solve for something like a y, couldn't I do anything I want as long as I do it to both sides of the equation? Yes. So I'm going to choose by choice to then take log base 10 since that's what our calculator allows us to do. So I'm going to log base 10 both sides. Log base 10, which is really just this because we don't write base 10. So log of 4 raised to the y, right? Which is equal to log of 25. Now we know due to properties of logarithms, it would be appropriate to take the y down. So y log of 4 equals log of 25. So now last step to get y alone, divide by log of 4. And we've just done the change of base formula, not just memorizing the whole. Sweet. Okay, cool. Ready? Here's the homework. Begin. If you have online, you can try to log in on your phone and begin.